Let's get some basics out of the way first. Kinipex brand, Cobra pliers, water pump pliers, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, it says Cobra right on there. They are made in Germany, okay, the Doyle brand, which is uh, uh, proprietary of Harbor Freight. Uh, these are made in Taiwan. Uh, where does it say that? Here you go, made in Taiwan, okay. Different regions, locations of manufacture. Let's get to that out of the way. Doyle brand coming in at uh, $17.99 before tax and, you know, local fees. The Knipex, I found them on Amazon today. It is early March of 2022 uh, for $28.60. Now, they may be on sale. I've seen them more around like $30, $32 USD. So, you know, it, it may vary depending on where you actually get them. Uh, I looked up the number of positions, or rather, I actually physically counted the number of positions on here. It has this very nice slider mechanism. On the Knipex, it is 18 different positions. On the Doyle, we have uh, 15, I believe. I, I think it says it on here somewhere. Uh, 15 adjustable positions, yeah. So that's a little bit different. Knipex is a little bit more um, finely tuned. Uh, you know, if you need that kind of fine range in your gripping tasks, then maybe the Knipex is more your speed. Uh, and then total jaw capacity. So when we, we lengthen them out all the way like this, it is one and a half inches, uh, which is like 33 millimeters or something like that. Uh, let me give you a, a, a better number down below what the metric measurement is. But the maximum jaw capacity is the same on both of these, inch and a half. Okay, that is the maximum like span that you can get on here. I think with the handles closed. I'm thinking that has to be a closed handle measurement. Yeah, yeah, okay. Inch and a half with, the, you know, as if you're actually gripping on the pliers, not like, you know, oh, it gets wider, but like you're not, you're not doing anything with the handles splayed like that. So they're supposed to be inch and a half, so they should be the same size when we actually open them up. And uh, that is what we're gonna do next. We can get a, an idea of what is actually going on here. Uh, one thing initially I saw that the back it's just a button, okay? Just slides in and out. On the back of the Knipex, there's the uh, leaf spring, which gives the button its actual, you know, back and forth motion. So I'm interested to see if the mechanism is different on the Doyle. So let's go ahead and unbox these in high speed. That package is trickier to open than it looks. Okay. All right, a little bit of oil, that's good. We like to see that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so our thickness is a little bit different here. And by the way, I got the closest size that I possibly could. The Knipex 180 millimeter pliers, a little bit shorter, right? That's, that's the best I could do. These Doyles are eight inch pliers as they're considered. So uh, they are going to be slightly longer and uh, there's just nothing we can do about that. These are the closest comparable sizes I could get. Um, by the way, our unboxing tool was the Schrade Tough multi-tool. Haven't uh, shown this on the channel yet, so giving it a little try out. All right, so we can slide pretty smoothly up to what is about an inch and a half. And the Doyle, here's the back side. So just a pin there. Let me uh, do it with the right hand. There we go. So I noticed that the back on this one not as curved. Probably just a, a manufacturing difference there. Oh, the jaws. Slightly different widths. Okay, the Doyle is is bigger across than the Knipex. Jaw capacity. Oh, wow. That actually goes to the Doyle. It is a little bit bigger. Yeah, you get like maybe an extra eighth of an inch, you know, one to one or two millimeters, not a whole lot. And um, it should be noted that the maximum size nut you can grab with each of these is less than one and a half inches because it has to span from here to here, not the, you know, actual width of these jaw tips. Uh, the design is pretty similar. It seems like the button is more shrouded on the Doyle. The uh, handle material definitely feels different. I like the Knipex textured handle more than this Doyle just initially. Although if you've got like a Knipex pliers wrench, 
uh, feels fairly similar to the handle dip material on there. So, yep, if you let go of it at some point, it'll lock in, right? If you're in between, it'll slide and lock into a position. Okay, and then uh, how far do these handles go out? Pretty comparable, I think. Smallest position, the doyle is still a bit wider. Huh, okay. Clearly we have a difference in uh, the sort of face of the pliers, if you will. This one's a little bit more of like a bull nose design, while the Knipex is a little more rounded, maybe a little more uh, leaf shaped, you know what I mean? The teeth are extremely, extremely similar. Uh, let's feel for sharpness, I guess. That's, yeah, pretty pretty good, pretty good on the Doyle. Knipex definitely more skin grabbing. Yeah, it, these are sharper teeth. I'm not sure um, what the Doyles are actually made of, you know? Uh, the Knipex are like a, what are they? Like chrome vanadium steel or something like that, like a CRV steel, I think. I'm sure someone will come at me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Uh, both of these pliers have the self-locking mechanism. So you go to grip a bolt, right? And you apply torque in this direction on the top handle down. You can see the jaws are not letting go. They just want to walk all the way around unless I pull back and then they release. So they call this a self-locking mechanism. And in practice, that is how it feels. Like once you get a good grip on something, whoops. <laughs> There's that doiled jaw capacity coming in handy. Once you, come on. I never use these for turning nuts. I use them for ripping stuff apart. Okay, once you get on there, you can just push the handles around from the top handle and it'll just stay locked on. Um, okay, yeah, in terms of nut turning, they are pretty good because you can release, right, and then reset and keep turning. They will mar up your uh, hardware a little bit, but if you're working with steel, that's gonna be better than something like this brass nut that I had available for demonstration. Um, and gripping rounds, I'm gonna need to go a little bigger. Gripping round objects, pretty good, pretty solid hold. Let's see, the doils, yeah, feels about the same. Okay, sorry I don't have any pipe on me. Seeing how much play we can get. Interestingly, only towards the button side. I've never actually tried this on the Knipex. We have a little less play, but in both directions on the Knipex. So both of them feel solid, like I have no no reservations about how well the doils are going to perform in terms of, you know, uh, nut turning and uh, getting a good grip on things. I don't think that's a problem. Um, my concern would be like long-term wear. Maybe the steel is not going to hold up as well. And, you know, maybe this sort of snub nose design is a little less handy than uh, they may have expected at the factory. I don't know. For me, I like these tiny little uh, grippers but I'm definitely going to uh, employ this doyle in the same way that I use my uh, current Cobra pliers, which is like ripping stuff to pieces. I work in furniture repair, and I like to chair, uh, tear apart chairs with these pliers. They're really good at gripping fabric, tacts, um, nails, staples. They're really freaking awesome for that. So the snub nose, in my particular use case, may be a little less useful, but we will see, I will definitely put them to work. All right, so there you go. Oh, and um, yeah, the patent. So the Knipex uh, had the patent until 2019, and I figured the patent may be expired, um, but I went and looked it up, and here's the clip that I found. I was scrolling through the web and uh, found patent like registry information, and found that Knipex actually let the patent um, go unpaid. I guess you have to pay a fee to maintain your patent for a tool, and uh, they stopped paying it back in 2019. So Doyle had the time to uh, design and, and prototype and then release their own version of this. 
And uh, yeah, here you go. Uh, I do think it's interesting that there's no like leaf spring on the back. Uh, I think long term that might be better because you can see I kind of have some crud under my Knipex. Although at the same time, if I need to replace this, I remove this, you know, little star head screw and replace the spring and then my pliers are good to go again. Whereas the Doyle, if they break, um, I don't even know how to get in there and, and actually repair anything. So in terms of longevity, my bet, my money is probably gonna be on Knipex, but I'm gonna give the Doyles a shot. They look like a pretty good design. They tried to bring some different elements here with a larger button. Might be easier to work if you have gloves on. You know, stuff like that. Then they coated it black pretty decently. Seems like it's gonna be a good amount of wear before that actually comes off. So I think they did all right. And uh, so weird that Knipex let the patent expire. I don't know if it was like close to, you know, expiring and they just stopped paying the fees. No idea. If somebody knows, put it down in the comments. And uh, that's it for today's comparison. For more content like this, as well as uh, multi-tools, I've got uh, fountain pens. I do other tool stuff around here, as well as typewriters. Like, sub, do the things, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.